Let's try another example. Uh, try pausing the video and try to predict what the product would look like here. Well, as usual, I've started by uh, redrawing the original molecule. Uh, let's try to interpret this electron pushing arrow. Uh, by the way, notice here that we're kind of thinking uh, as if uh, uh, the, we have two separate molecules, perhaps. We have one molecule with the X and the Y and another molecule that has atom Z here. Uh, this plus sign indicates that these are two separate things. Uh, maybe uh, to be consistent, then I should have been a put a plus up here as well, because here we indicated that the X and Y uh, were becoming uh, two separate things. So I should have put in a plus sign there. Th this plus sign obviously does not mean a positive charge. It just means that we've got uh, one molecule with the X and one molecule with the Y from our previous example. And here in our new example, the plus sign is indicating we've got one molecule with the X and the Y and another molecule with the Z. Now the tail of the arrow is coming from the bond. So where are the electrons coming from? They must be coming from the pair of electrons in that bond. So we can start by erasing that bond since the electrons are leaving there. And where are the electrons going to? Well, the head of the arrow here is pointing to atom Z. So obviously the electrons are moving towards atom Z. But the question has to be, um, so we know that atom Z is going to get more possession of those electrons. Uh, but does that mean that atom Z is going to be getting the electrons in a new bond or in a lone pair? Is atom Z here going to be getting a bond or a lone pair? Well, we can figure that out uh, by using our ideas of lacking, sharing, and owning. For example, um, in, our starting, in our starting materials, what was the relationship between Z and the pair of electrons that we're focusing on? Well, in the starting materials... the relationship was that atom Z completely lacked any possession of this pair of electrons that we're focusing on. And now the head of the arrow is pointing towards atom Z. That means that atom Z is going to get more possession of the electrons. Well, if you start with a lack of uh, uh, any possession of the electrons, the only way to get more possession is to start sharing the electrons in a bond. Again, atom Z is starting with a lack of the electrons completely, and then the only allowable thing is for it to start sharing the electrons. Because we've said you can only make one step at a time in this little chart uh, down here. You cannot go from completely lacking electrons to completely owning them. That would be too big of a jump. That's why, again, there's this X uh, on this side showing that we can't make this transition. This transition here that's X'd out can't be made. Only these transitions over here can be made. We can make a one-step transition from lacking to sharing. So that means that the, the Z is now going to gain possession of the electrons in a bond. Uh, a bond between who and who? Well, uh, it's got to be obviously between Z and either X and Y. So is Z going to form a bond with X or is Z going to form a bond with Y? Um, and the answer is it can go either way. We know that Z is going to be forming a new bond, but it could either be with X or Y. Um, so we might draw this. We might say that the pair of electrons has gone into a bond between X and Z, uh, X and Z. And in that case, Y would be uh, now in a separate molecule. Or, or we might say that Z is forming a new bond with Y, and that X would be in a separate molecule. Um, we really can't tell just from uh, the information I've given you which of these two situations we're going to get. We know that Z is forming a new bond, 
Uh, but based on this arrow, it could be either with atom X or with uh, atom Y. We can't really tell uh, which one it is yet. Uh, the arrow is a little bit ambiguous that way. Uh, but either way, this would now be a um, legal transition because you can see that now Z really is sharing the electrons. Z is sharing that pair of electrons in this bond. Or Z is sharing the pair of electrons in this bond with Y. So Z has gone from lacking the pair of electrons to sharing them. Well, that's an allowed transition. Now we've seen a uh, new fourth type of allowed transition. The electrons are going from a bond to a new sigma bond. The electrons are being taken out of one bond and being used to form a new sigma bond. And again, just in case you haven't heard that term yet in your course, um, you can just think of a sigma bond as a single bond. And remember that this is just the symbol for sigma. Let's confirm that the other atoms in this setup are also following the lacking sharing and owning rules. So what's the relationship of X and Y? to the pair of electrons that we're focusing on in the starting materials. Well, in our starting materials, X and Y were sharing that pair in the bond. Uh, and then in this picture over here, X is still sharing them. X is still sharing the pair of electrons because it still has that pair of electrons in a bond, and Y lacks the electrons. Well, it's definitely okay for Y to go from sharing the electrons to lacking them. That's just a one-step move, to go from sharing to lacking the electrons, a one-step move. And something I haven't mentioned before, but it's certainly uh, okay not to, move a re not to move at all. It's certainly okay to start by sharing the electrons and to end by sharing the electrons. I haven't shown that specifically in this diagram here. Uh, but the, the thing we have to watch out for is uh, making too big of a jump. Well, definitely going from sharing the electrons to continue to share the electrons, that's not too big of a jump. So X is definitely uh, not breaking uh, any rules here. You can, uh, if you start by sharing a pair of electrons it's, uh, in one bond, it's perfectly allowable to continue sharing them in a different bond, even though uh, I haven't actually drawn something that shows that specifically in this diagram down here. I think that's uh, plain enough. All right, and uh, by the same token, um, these sets of products would also have been legal. In these sets of products, it's X that now lacks the electrons, the pair of electrons that we're focusing on, and Y that is sharing them, well, again, that would be legal because X has gone from sharing the pair in the starting materials to lacking them in the product. Sharing to lacking is one step, and Y has gone from sharing the electrons in the starting materials to continuing to share them in the product. Well, that's uh, uh, no step at all, so that's definitely um, allowed. Okay, so these are all uh, allowable transitions. Now, um, uh, you'll probably agree with me that uh, all the transitions we've seen so far, we've seen four transitions so far, this one is the trickiest. Uh, this is the trickiest or the most confusing. Uh, so, so what are the things that make this tricky? Uh, well, uh, I, I think there's two issues here. The first one is that it's a little bit difficult to interpret the head of the arrow here. The head of the arrow is pointing at atom Z. And if you were in a hurry, it would be easy to think that the head of the arrow meant that Z was going to gain the electrons as a lone pair. If you were in a hurry, I think it would be easy to think that Z is gaining the electrons as a lone pair here, which is wrong. That's not what Z is doing. Uh, but but uh, I think we have the tools now to see why it wouldn't make sense to think that Z is gaining the electrons as a lone pair. Here's the, the thought process that I think you should go through. You should look at the head of the arrow, and you should say, aha, Z is going to be gaining more possession of these electrons. Well, what was the... what? what uh, did Z seem, what, did Z, what, what kind of possession did Z have for the electrons in the starting materials? Well, in the starting materials, Z completely lacked the electrons. Z started by completely lacking the electrons. The head of the arrow indicates that it's going to be getting more possession of the electrons. Well, if it starts with a lack of the electrons and it's going to get more possession, it has to end up sharing the electrons. That is, Z has to end up sharing the electrons in a bond. 
If Z starts with a lack of electrons, it can't end up owning them in a lone pair, because we've learned that that's too big of a transition. So again, the thought process you should go through when you see the head of the arrow on this Z is, well, what does Z look like in the starting materials? In the starting materials, Z starts with a lack of any possession of those electrons. The head of the arrow tells me that Z is going to be gaining more possession of the electrons, but I know that we have to move in small steps. So it's going to go from lacking the electrons to sharing them in a bond. It would be too big of a jump for Z to go from lacking the electrons to owning them in a lone pair. That's the thought process that should convince us that the head of the arrow here indicates that Z is going to end up sharing the electrons in a bond, not owning them in a lone pair.